right guys I am really excited right now I am actually on my way to look at a modified race car set up for the dirt track but not just any race car this one's got a lot of history and up here in the north dare I say it's pretty legendary it's got a lot of history and she's got quite a few wins under the old belt buckle there I watched my dad do the roundy round dirt track racing when I was growing up and the West Side Tire and Auto race team, well, they were a little rough around the edges, but they had a lot of fun. And that's where my love of ice grip started. My dad came in the pits yelling, just give me high gear. Well, he got it and finished the main event with the vice grip as a shifter. So since that day, I decided, you know, a guy's going to go ahead and need a dirt track car one way or another. And I'm hoping we can maybe make a deal on this thing today. I think it's just down the road here. Oh, another two miles maybe. We'll pull in and see if we can find this thing. Just up here, around these corners up here. Well, a guy found the place. It's actually right down the hill. But first, I wanted to show you guys this. It's actually even in a book. And if you've never seen old school modified race cars, this is what we're talking about right here. I mean, men were men back then. And the car we're after is the 777 of Harry or Luke McLean. There it is right there. 1938 Chevy Coupe. Clean sweep of the season there. And there's another photograph of it here on the start finish line. Really, really cool car. Of course, there's another famous 777 car. Marty Robbins. Uh, I think he ran like 38 NASCAR races. They're all self-funded. Moses, that's expensive. But he ran like a Belvedere or a Charger, something like that. This is a smaller, just two-door coupe. Oh, I see it down here. Man, this thing looks awesome. So this was raced in the late 50s, early 60s. And then it was just put in a field of rot, basically, like most race cars. Oh, man, this thing looks just mean. <laughs> The original owner, Luke, got it back again, and then he restored it close as he could to the way he had it. This thing looks awesome. So the numbers were back here and the mobile was up here, but that looks really sharp. Man, this thing looks just insane. There you go. Speedway. There's Luke there with the car. This thing, I wish you guys could see this in person. This thing looks just menacing. So there's a couple things that make this car really cool to me that stick out that are really unique. One is this is on an original frame. So most have like a metric frame, a body frame. So you have independent front suspension. And some sort of linked ran like a four link or something like that but setting this car up you've got four leaf springs so you really just have your shocks tire width and height 
offset on the wheels and that's it the rest is driver technique and engine and then this cockpit setup is really unique the gas pedal is way over here then you've got your brake clutch over there and the shifter is actually between the driver's legs when you're running this thing and I, that's just the way he likes it and i don't even know if i'm going to fit in this thing but to know that he won that many races in this thing is just mind-blowing and he went into the superior hall of fame in 2002 as well luke mclean did and you can see this thing back in the day they just take a car roll it into the barn and they just build it with whatever they had laying around this might be drill pipe i'll try to verify but just off the oil rig um they just bent it however they made their own shock mounts that's just a chunk of angle iron i don't even know what this side is just a bunch of whatever steel added on to the frame there this is just the way it was back then guys i mean the men back then just they had some brass i'll tell you that looks like a couple stacked bumpers in the back welded them together and i think on the front yeah they just took one and snipped her off there and there some of the original photos he had a bar coming across here not sure why he ended up getting rid of those so i'll show you the other thing that makes this car really unique and it's going to bottle your mind all the way up give me a second to get this hood open and i'll show you so typically engine sits in here radiators up here Look how snipped back he's got this engine. She's just tucked way back in there. So the front of the engine's here in relation to the front tire. And he did that to get the weight back on the wheels. I'm not even sure if this would pass even vintage modified class rules today. But that's really neat. And then that brake pedal, he put the master on the passenger side, which is normally over here. But how he has the steering shaft set up and the steering gearbox made him bring the brake over here which is why he's got this swing arm brake pedal thing going on over there so there was some ingenuity put into this thing for sure everything's pretty well tucked in there looks like he might have ran a battery up here for a little while and then i'm sure updated rules batteries under there now with cut off and all that and then the fuel cell is back here i'll get that open so this will surprise a lot of you but this is actually a 283 and back in the day these 283s and 307s they packed a lot of punch i mean they still do if you build them right and the biggest thing that this thing needed apparently was just rpm around the track and this is what he went with it was a 283 looks like a wyand intake edelbrock carburetor not seeing any casting marks I'm familiar with on the heads. It's got headers. I don't know what the internal stuff is on that thing, but 283 small block. Got the check leg. Yeah, there's the fuel cell. Looks like plastic. Uh, fuel gauge. Looks like she's a 10 gallon unit. Hey, if it works, it works. Basically just cut out the floor back here. You don't need any of that stuff. A little separation wall and that is pretty much it back here inner webbing and the trunk lid was taken out so this thing can't weigh much of anything i mean basically this is just a frame and a small block and by the way this is a three speed transmission not a four speed and i'll crawl under it here in a second but it's got some unknown rear end in it right now I'll have to spend some time and try to figure out what that is, but kind of just looks like a rear truck axle. He did an axle flip, so the axle's on the top. That brings the rear down, and then he's got a homemade traction bar system in here, and that keeps the axle from wrapping or bouncing. But, I mean, all this is homemade, fellas. He just put this together however he thought it would work well, and apparently it worked really well because... He just kept winning and winning and winning.
kind of hard to see but looks like a solid trans mount coming all the way across here and then another one back here and then it's straight piped out this side snips out right there pretty awesome and then only the passenger door opens so this is how you get into the thing this thing is just it's so cool to be climbing and around in here and just knowing all of the different racetracks that this thing's been on and won. I think I'm going to drop the wheel and see if I fit in this thing. Well, I'm sure thinking this guy was a lot shorter than me. Oh. Got a little bit of room. Yeah, so this pedal setup is really unique and the legs are just I don't think I can go any more backwards though it's gonna be a problem but really unique pedal setup for sure shifters down here and that's a three speed must have been a bear going from first to second and this is pretty sloppy she needs, she needs tightened up for sure. Very cool. So this is my view. You've got old school oil pressure, temp gauge, and the volt gauge. Those are obviously updated at some point. Got the Sun Pro Attack up here, set to just about 6,000. And we got ignition over here and then the pedal setup. Brake, throttle, shifter. So I guess we might as well just fire this thing up, huh? I mean, I don't know what you guys are thinking, but I'm thinking I gotta own this thing. So I'm gonna go have a wobble pop with this guy, see if we can come up with a number and figure out how to get this home, which I don't have a trailer. So hmm. a good family friend was able to get the car and he's had it for 17 years now, give or take. Really, really nice guy. He's been really good working with. And uh, we were able to come together on a price, so Vice Grip Garage officially owns this beautiful machine. Now my shop's about, I think I'm 10 miles, 10, 12 miles. I'm actually relatively close. I don't have the trailer on my truck. So I think I'm just gonna do the right thing and just drive it home. The trailer's in town, which is an hour drive one way. And that's got another revival sitting on it. And I don't have time for two hours, this and that. So we're just going to go this route. The tires can't be but more than 20 years old. I'm going to run these uh, Lincoln goggles. They work great for plasma or torch work. Even better on your motorcycle. Or if you got to snip your race car down the highway. They also work really good for that.
this idea not really coming to mind. This shifter's bad. See what we got. It's almost like a tire was coming off. Got lugs there. Got bugs. Man, I don't know what that was. Had a side to side. Oh, I bet I know what's going on. Uh, 26.5. 815 so 265 high circumference and this one looks older no that's 2652 thought maybe if it had a locked rear she was dragging a tire you can definitely tell it's a locked rear though that tire is dragging but I'm not sure what that was we'll just have to keep the speed down I guess I don't have any idea how fast I was going but it couldn't have been that fast so basically I'm just gonna pretend it didn't happen and just jump in and keep going well here's take two as long as we don't lose the tire I'll be okay with everything else oh here comes traffic lots of traffic why what are what are they even doing there is absolutely no way I would not get pulled over.
gonna pretend I didn't hear that. I've only got maybe another mile. We made it, this is my turn. set really low. Oh, we made it. That was one of the funnest things I have ever done in my life. Seriously. Minus the whole almost being ripped off the road thing. That's slightly inconvenient. I need to get this inside in case the sheriff sneaks by. Was it me? guy sits here and thinks about it I bet it's got to do with the alignment and see how this wheel is kind of toe out and if you look at this one she's definitely diving down so what he was probably doing if I were to turn this left and the guy were to look at it this tire here is going to be toe out or diving in or pointed down the track and what that does for a feller is it helps go left. And probably even, so that's a 26.5. I'm wondering if this one isn't taller. Uh, where is it at? Even, oh right there, 27.5. So inch taller. So I think that's probably gonna be it. I can play with that alignment. But basically inch taller on the Franker side and he had this thing just to dive left so it's fine I think I'm just gonna leave her be assuming that it is the alignment but she's not made to drive on concrete hard clay and stuff like that it would do just fine if you're seeing something obvious that I'm missing here or have any suggestions on something that I should be looking for or trying bleep bloop that down there in the comments for me and also if you have any history on this car photographs anything like that can point me to any books or websites really appreciate that and then also if you have any ideas what we should do with this thing originally I was thinking about maybe racing it once or twice just to bring her back but it's in really good shape I'd really hate to ball this thing up so we keep it as is do we try to make it street legal somehow? Use it kind of as a rat rod? I do want to really kind of preserve the history, so I'm not going to paint it or anything like that. But yeah, if you've got any ideas or suggestions, put that down in the comments too. And you guys will definitely see this on the channel more. Next time we'll get it up on the lift maybe and see if we can figure out that shake and then just really go feed this thing some onions. But thank you guys for watching. Appreciate it very much. See you next time.